And those are the main stories this morning. Sports and the weather coming up in a few minutes' time. Now, if you're thinking about going on a shopping trip this weekend, it's worth bearing in mind that from today, your rights have changed. The new Consumer Rights Act means that you'll have longer to return faulty goods. And for the first time, there are rules for mobile phone downloads. Joining us now is Sylvia Rook from Trading Standards. Good morning to Good you. Morning. Now, if things were a little bit woolly previously, does this new legislation make things any clearer? It certainly will, because what the law is now saying is if you've got a problem with any goods, you've got 30 days in which you can take them back and get your money back. Before, it was a matter of saying you could keep them for a reasonable time, and it was very vague. But now it's a very clear 30 days. If you have a fault, you can take it back. So, just a fault? Now, you say a problem with anything. What, does it ha what, what happens if you just change your mind? Changing your mind, you have no legal right. I mean, a lot of shops give you some sort of change of mind policy, a goodwill gesture. But what we're talking about here is we're talking about goods that are faulty, that are misdescribed, Described, they're not fit for the purpose you bought them for. And in those circumstances, you now have clear rights. So take us through how this works. For a lot of people, they might think 30 days is better than it was, possibly. But supposing three months after you bought a very expensive pair of trainers, you've worn them, you know, you've worn them reasonably, and they start falling apart. And you take them back and you say, well, no, that's not good enough. You know, I've paid £90, it could be more for a pair of trainers, and I haven't worn them that much. Look at them now. What, where, where do you stand in relation to that? Well, after the 30 days, you've lost the right to reject, but you still have the right to a repair or a replacement. And so that you can go back to the shop and you can show them the fault and you can say that you want a replacement pair and you are entitled to that. Why are you entitled to it? Because they... that's, what, that's what the law says. Well, the, the, the argument that people have over the counter, and a lot of people will have done this themselves, is that they're standing there and the, the, the shop will say, well, you've worn them a lot. What do you expect? Where does wear and tear, where, what's reasonable wear and tear relative to the time frame? Well, it's always very difficult to say that because you've got to look at the lifespan of goods, really, and you've got to say how long you'd expect something to last. Clearly, with a pair of trainers, you'd expect them to last for more than three months. So, if you look at the item, you take it back, you might need to get an expert opinion if you can't reach an agreement with a shop. Um, but the rights are there to try and clarify the situation for people. I think Charlie just picked up on something really important then, which is that you know, when you're at the counter, very often there can be a disagreement, and a, a lot of the time I sense that maybe the person I'm talking to isn't a hundred percent sure of what the correct law is and i'm certainly not sure about it at all is there now a responsibility for everybody to be educated about their rights i think consumer education is extremely important as is business education anyone can set up in business you don't have to have training so businesses don't understand the law either so what the chartered trading standards institute is trying to do is to educate businesses so they've got a website called the business companion and there's very clear information there for businesses to tell them what they need to do and what their obligations are and the citizens advice doing the same thing for consumers so the aim is to try and get everybody to understand their rights Supposing you've followed all that, supposing you've looked very carefully at what your legal rights are, and supposing you've gone to the shop and, and they've said, no, not going to do that, what's your recourse? Well, the important thing is to put something in writing and put it in writing to the owner of the business, so it might be a limited company or something, explaining what your issue is and explaining what you want. And they still say no. If they still say no, well, there's an opportunity for um, alternative dispute resolution now, where you can go to an ombudsman, they may be able to deal with the matter on your behalf. But finally, it may be the courts, the small claims court, to get your money back. One of the new things I know today is that there's, you are protected on digital purchases. That's right. W were we not protected before? The problem with the old law, and the Sale of Goods Act came in in 1979, we didn't have digital items. And so the law on sale of goods covers goods, and the supply of goods and services covers services. But there was nothing to cover digital content. So digital content is now being introduced to all new legislation, giving consumers clear rights. A lot of people will be aware that if you buy something on a credit card, there are protections involved in that purchase. How does, what's the crossover there? What the credit card protection under the Consumer Credit Act gives you is an equal liability. So if you pay for something with your credit card and it costs over £100, then the credit card company is equally liable with the shop. So if the shop refuses to help you, then you go to the credit card company and they should be able to help you instead because they have a legal obligation to do so. Very, very quickly, yeah. um, Tracy's been in touch. What about shops who only offer credit notes, not cash back? If you've got faulty goods, a shop has to give you your money back. A credit note is only something they give you as a goodwill gesture if you change your mind. Legally, they have to give you your money back if goods are faulty. Very good. Thank you very much for your time this morning.
Uh, it is 16 minutes past eight and Ben will be back just before nine o'clock this morning looking at this very issue and answering, answering more of those questions that you have been sending us throughout the morning. Uh, 16 minutes past eight is the time now. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News. A reminder of our main stories. America and Russia have agreed to hold talks to try and minimise the risk of clashes during their combat missions over Syria. As we've been hearing, shoppers have been handed new powers to demand refunds for faulty goods as the Consumer Rights Act comes into force today. The legislation will replace laws which haven't changed since the 1970s and 80s. Let's take a moment and have a look at the weather. Carol's there for us today. Good morning. Good morning, both. Good morning to you as well. I just want to tell you something interesting to start with, hopefully and right the way through the broadcast as well. Yesterday, the last day in September, the temperature in Braemar was minus one first thing in the morning. That was the lowest temperature yesterday and also for the whole of the month of September anywhere in the UK. But by afternoon, Braemar had shot up to 24 Celsius yesterday, making it the warmest part of the UK, but also the warmest September day this year across the whole of the UK. It's not record-breaking, but it is quite unusual, especially on the last day of the month. Now, high pressure is dominating our weather, and today and for the rest of this week, actually, we're looking at dry conditions, mostly sunny, with patchy morning fog and also a little bit of frost at times for some of us. The fog this morning is across the central lowlands, Northern Ireland and Northern England in particular. This is where it's densest, particularly northeast England. Now, it will be quite slow to clear. It could take most of the morning and it will lift into low cloud before it eventually breaks, allowing a lot of sunshine. We're looking at a lot of blue skies once again today. So for Northern Ireland, after the patchy fog this morning, it will brighten up beautifully and we've got those blue skies. It will feel pleasant too in just a very gentle breeze. Across the far north of Scotland, you'll find a little bit more cloud at times right on the coastline. Come in line, inland and it's going to be a beautiful day as well when we lose that fog and feel pleasant as well. We could well see 24 Celsius in Braemar again today. For Northern England, after this morning's fog lifts and the cloud breaks, Another belter of a day, and the same too across the Midlands, East Anglia, Essex, Kent, all the way across southern England, into the Isle of Wight, the Channel Islands, all the way across southwest England, and into the Isles of Scilly as well. Beautiful day in prospect, if you like the sunshine. And the breeze in the south is lighter than yesterday, so it will feel warmer. And for Wales, here too, we're looking at a gorgeous day ahead. Now, as we head on through the evening and overnight, once again, we'll see some mist and fog reform. It will be patchy, not all of us will catch it. And the temperatures in towns and cities higher generally anyway than at the countryside. But in the countryside tonight, it is going to be quite cold. Cold enough for a touch of frost in sheltered glens and also some valleys. So we start tomorrow on a chilly note for some with the patchy mist and fog. Rather like the last few days, what you'll find is that will lift into low cloud, some of it taking its time to clear. And tomorrow's the day of sunny spells rather than wall-to-wall -wall blue skies. There'll be a bit more cloud across northwest Scotland, which could produce some drizzle, and through the day we'll see a bit more cloud get in across Northern Ireland, but still a nice day. Then for Saturday, well, we're starting to see an increase in the amount of cloud, but for most of us, it's going to be a dry day. There will be sunny spells, a weather front flirting with the northern and western Isles, introducing some spots of rain, and here too it's likely to be that bit breezier. And a quick look at Sunday shows another dry day for the bulk of the UK. You might catch one or two showers coming from the thicker cloud, and there will be a bit more cloud around, but the breakdown happens from the southwest later on Sunday night and into Monday morning, and that breakdown will move northwards, getting into the north, by the time we get to Tuesday, back to you too. So, Carol, what is it? Is it all changed next week? Is it suddenly going to get cold? It's not suddenly going to get cold, Charlie, because as this system comes in, it's still going to have mild air wrapped in it. So we still are looking at temperatures into the mid-teens. But it's a change from the very settled conditions that we've had this week because we've been so dominated by high pressure. Carol, thanks very much indeed. We'll talk to you again in the next half hour. 8.20 is the time now. In the last year, a third of over 65-year-olds in the UK have fallen over and treatments for their injuries are estimated to have cost the NHS more than £2 billion. Yes, a recent survey suggests that it's actually the over 50s age group that's seriously underestimating its risk of falling. Joining us now is Catherine Pope from the Chartered Society of Physiotherapists. Good morning Good to morning. you. I imagine there are people at home spluttering into their cups of tea going, what? Over 50? I surely can't be at risk of falling. You know, in your early 50s, you would imagine you're fit and healthy, hopefully, and 
not at too much risk? Well, um, we were quite surprised that the survey showed that um, people really underestimated the risk. So um, only uh, about 7% of people in their 50s think they'll fall, but actually almost double that amount did in the last year. What kind of falls are we talking about? Well, it can be anything. You could just um, trip over. People have even tripped over their own cats. So it could be anything, a trip in the in the home or it could be quite a serious fall in, in the street or anywhere and else. Often with older people, a lot of people will, will know this, it, that that can trigger other problems. Kind of a fall can be number one a sign, but also it can trigger other health problems. Yes, and if you've got pre-existing health problems, then you're at more risk. But yes, it can be a sign that there's something more seriously wrong. But falls on their own are the leading cause of death amongst them, the over 60s, and it's also the leading reason why people get admitted to hospital. What's the challenge for you then? Is it that people perhaps don't accept they might be at risk or they don't know that they're at risk because you know when we read about the, the likely situations where people might fall it always seems something that you just think oh how on earth did that happen um i think yes pe people do under underestimate it and we've launched this booklet today so that's got a checklist in it so you can see if you're at risk and then some tips about um, how to lower that risk but I think um, also people are probably quite embarrassed to tell someone they've fallen over so they don't seek help. One of the things we were just talking about is something simple like slippers. Yes. yes. An old pair of slippers. If you constantly wear the same pair of slippers, you might be at more risk of falling over literally because they've worn away. Yes, or, and they no longer fit you properly and they're not giving you any support. So it's quite easy to trip over it in the, in the home. So don't wait till Christmas or a new pair of yours have worn out. It can be delicate, and I think you alluded to this before. Those conversations asking an elderly relative, you know, how are you feeling and trying to get details or ask them, for example, have you had any moments, anything? That can be delicate, Carter, because there's a lot of pride. Yes. People don't want to say anything. That, that's sometimes quite difficult yes. to approach. And, peop and people will be scared because they think it might mean that they have to go into a care home or something and peop you know, people want to stay at home as long as they can. But sometimes the fear of falling can be worse than the actual fall because you'll just stay at home and stay in your chair and get really stiff and inactive, which increases your risk. But also you get very lonely because you don't meet anybody else. So what is the advice? And you, you touched on it there. You know, sitting in a chair all day is actually possibly the worst thing if you're afraid of falling or unsteady on your feet. What should people be doing? Well, we would encourage people to do some regular exercise, which could just be doing your housework a bit more vigorously or a bit of gardening. Um, but also there are some very simple exercises in our leaflet that you can just do in your own home holding onto a chair. They'll help increase your balance and also make your muscles a bit stronger. So that will reduce your risk straight away. But if you do think you're at risk, then it's a good idea to go to your doctor and ask to see a physiotherapist or have an assessment to see what else could be done to reduce the risk. And do you think, on the whole, when, when older people have falls and they, they go into, say, they have to go to hospital or go and see their GP, uh, is there a good experience there? I mean, is the treatment they get good on the whole? Um, yes, um, there are falls prevention um, uh, services available all around the country and um, they're very good at reducing the number of falls. So if someone presents at a hospital who is elderly who's had a fall, there will be the questions will be asked that might be helpful to them in terms of what happens, what yes, might and, happen Yes, and they'll home. be given some treatment as well. And if they need a walking aid, then that they'd be provided with that. Um, but I think what we're trying particularly to say is it's better to have something done before you fall over because falling is the leading cause of being admitted to hospital or, or even dying for older people. So falls prevention is, is better than waiting till you fall over. Catherine, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Catherine Pope. Let's see, the Victoria Derbyshire show is on at 9.15 this morning, BBC Two. Joanna Gosling is in the chair, as it were. Joanna, morning. <laughs> on the sofa this morning. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, on the programme today, we'll be talking to the father of Jordan Davis, an unarmed black teenager who was shot dead in the US three years ago by a white middle-aged man during a row over loud music. It became one of America's highest profile murder cases, raising issues around racism, prejudice and the country's judicial system. Plus, we'll ask some mothers who smoke, what they think of the new ban on smoking in cars and whether they'll obey it. Join us straight after breakfast at 9.15 on BBC Two, the BBC News Channel and online. See you later. Thank you very much indeed, Joanna. That's something we're going to talk about, isn't it? Smoking in cars. Heather has been in touch. About time, while I sat in a car at a motorway service station last weekend, another car pulled up beside me. Couldn't believe my eyes. There were three adults all smoking, windows up, two children sat in the back next to one of them.
Uh, and a couple of other things picking up on this morning about uh, consumer rights. We were talking about that just a moment ago. Michelle's been in touch, had a, a pair of faulty kids trainers a few months ago. Within six weeks, strap fell off, brought them back to the shop. Ref they refused to change them, wrote to the shoe manufacturer directly, who then referred me back to the shop. So never got... Any see, kind of result. This is the problem, isn't it? Because it always ends up being quite a lot more work than just giving up and putting them in a cupboard. Exactly. Which is not the right thing to do. Uh, you're watching Breakfast from BBC News. Still to come this morning, we'll take a look inside one of Europe's biggest children's hospitals as it moves 200 very poorly children to a new site. Before all that, time to get the news, travel and weather where you're waking up this morning. Good morning from BBC London News. I'm Alice Bandukravi. A car has caught fire on the M25 in Kent this morning, causing major delays. This was the scene at Junction 2 half an hour ago, just before fire crews arrived to extinguish the blaze. There are no reported injuries, and we'll have more on that and the rest of the travel situation later in the bulletin. London's air ambulance team will soon get a new helicopter. The charity has managed to raise £4 million towards buying the second aircraft, but says it needs a total of £6 million to pay for it in full and to keep it flying for the next five years. The second helicopter will allow an additional 400 patients to be treated each year. Thousands of private tenants in the capital are going without hot water or heating because of rogue landlords, according to a report by the Conservative Group on the London Assembly. It says local authorities in London receive almost 3,000 cases of outstanding urgent repairs every year and that some tenants had to wait more than three months before their emergency was fixed. Had emergency situations where people have uh, uh, either don't have heating, they don't have hot and cold running water or there's been a major leak and they haven't got a good service from their landlord. What we're saying is we should give some power to local authorities to be able to issue fixed penalty fines for landlords who don't uh, uh, rectify the problem in a short space of time. Let's find out what the travel situation is looking like now. And on the tube, there is a good service, apart from minor delays on the overground. And after that fire on the M25 anti-clockwise near Dartford, the road is blocked near Junction 2, the A2, with queues back past Junction 3 for the M20. The A406 North Circular also has long queues from Walthamstow to Bounds Green. That's because of roadworks. Let's get a check on the weather now with Elizabeth Rizzini. Hello, good morning. I'm happy to report that today's weather is going to be very similar to yesterday's, but do make the most of it because it might well be the last day of these blue cloud-free skies. More sunshine around today then, lighter winds so it won't feel quite as fresh as it did yesterday. There are some mist and fog patches around this morning though, so watch out for those through this morning's rush. And it's been a fairly chilly start, but temperatures of course rising nicely in that sunshine. With the winds lighter than yesterday, it will feel even more pleasant in the sunshine. Top temperatures up to 18 or 19 Celsius somewhere. We may even get 20 degrees again 68 in Fahrenheit. Now overnight tonight again not much changes but we will start to get some more cloud just feed in on that very light easterly breeze and mist and fog patches forming again into tomorrow morning. Temperatures away from the towns that will drop back into single figures. Now it may be for some areas that that mist and fog lifts into some cloud for tomorrow. There will generally be a bit more cloud around tomorrow but there will also be some sunshine of course top temperatures again up to around 19 Celsius and then for the weekend the high pressure is going to migrate off to the northeast so it will start to feed down some more cloud. There will be more cloud around at the weekend. Brightness rather than sunshine some of the time. Some sunny spells coming through. Some chilly nights and it's set to change into next week. That's it. Vanessa Feltz is on our radio station in half an hour. Bye bye for now. Hello, this is Breakfast with Charlie State and Sally Nugent. A reminder of the main stories this morning. The US and Russian military will hold talks as soon as possible to avoid accidental clashes with each other in Syria. That's according to the country's top diplomats. Russia says its aircraft carried out about 20 missions against so-called Islamic State yesterday. But the US is worried that Russia was targeting other rebel groups rather than IS fighters. It's been called the biggest shake-up to shoppers' rights for a generation. It comes into force today. Anything you buy from now on will be covered by the new Consumer Rights Act. Fresh legislation will offer more protection to customers if something goes wrong with an item and, for the first time, on digital purchases such as music downloads or mobile phone apps. 
Jeremy Corbyn will visit Scotland today for the first time since becoming Labour leader. He says winning back support from the SNP will be a priority following his party's near wipeout in the general election when Labour lost 56 seats in Scotland. Leading physiotherapists say the NHS could save millions of pounds each year if more money was spent on reducing the risk of older people falling over. A third of over 65s are expected to suffer a fall at least once this year, and 13% of those are 50 and above. The Chartered Society of Physiotherapists says treating their injuries places a huge burden on the NHS, but say simple exercises could prevent a number of accidents. A ban on smoking in the same vehicle as children comes into force in England and Wales today. Anyone who lights up in a car with passengers who are under 18 can be issued with a fixed penalty of £50. The driver can also be fined for allowing others to smoke. The Police Federation says enforcing the new law will be difficult and time-consuming, but public health leaders claim it's more about education than enforcement. We're hoping and confident that the very fact this is a law will make people think about actually this is a serious issue and that they will comply of their own accord and will change their smoking habits. That's certainly what we've seen with other smoke-free legislation. A public inquiry into historical allegations of the abuse of children in care is due to begin in Scotland today. Survivors' organisations say they're dismayed by the slow progress made since the inquiry was announced last December. Ambulances in Wales are no longer expected to respond to most 999 calls within a set time. The target of reaching 65% within eight minutes, used elsewhere in the UK, had been missed for several years. Crews will still be expected to reach life-threatening emergencies within eight minutes. And those are the main stories this morning. Time now is 8.33. That brings you right up to date. Carol will have the weather for us in about 10 minutes' time, but also on the programme this morning, former Formula One champion Nigel Mansell.